Good morning guys. It's a new day here on the third time around ranch. I want to talk about something. In one of our last videos I had discussed the problems that we had with our sawmill and the crank to bring it up and bring it down. It was broke. I had talked to Harbor Freight and they said that they would send us a new part. Okay, well fast forward about a week and we had gotten an email from them. They said that I would have to wait indefinitely for the part. So I got a hold of them and I told them, you know, the warranty is only good for 90 days. I can't wait indefinitely. I need this sawmill. I have things I have to do. So we returned the sawmill. They said that they could send us a new one or we could just get a refund. We went with the refund. We obviously don't want another one that's going to break after just 30 days. Today, we had something else delivered. Today, we got a new sawmill. We got this sawmill from Woodland Mills. This is the one that we had wanted to get, but it was too late because we had already ordered the one from Harbor Freight. I'm really hoping this one is sturdier, better condition. Now, I did call them before we ordered and I was very specific and I asked them if any part breaks on it, how hard is it to get replacement parts? They said it's not difficult at all. We have all of the parts here. So, supposedly, they have all the parts and there's no waiting. If something breaks, there's no waiting to order it from China or anywhere else. They have all the parts in stock. I don't know if they make them or what, but so that's a plus. They also give you a two year warranty on it. Harbor Freight only gave a 90 day warranty. So that right there is two things that already make it better. Now, if I was smart, I would have done my homework first and found all this out before I ordered one. But you live and learn. Hopefully somebody watching this video will learn from our experience that you really need to do your homework. Um, I know there are sawmills out there that are probably even better than this one, but we can't really, we cannot afford any more than this. We need this because our next step is to start building bedrooms. Um, the, bed, the bedrooms that we're building are not part of our permanent house. They're just to get us out of the RV and into a bedroom for sleeping and the buildings that we build will then later on down the line be used for barns or storage or whatever and that will happen after we've built a house this is just a way to get us into some bedrooms get us living a little bit more comfortable while we build the place up and then eventually put in a house so anyways you guys have seen us put one saw mill together and I don't think you really want to see us put together another one. So we're going to get it unloaded and put it together and we will bring you back and show it to you when it's all put together. We'll show you any major differences that we see between this and the Harbor Freight Mill. And hopefully we'll get it done soon enough today that we can also run a log through it. If not, We'll do that tomorrow and we'll just add on to this video before we, we post the video. So let's get this thing together and we'll see you back when it's all done. All right, guys, so it's the next day. We spent five hours on assembling this last night. And we got it mostly done. And then this morning we needed to just tighten up all the bolts, make sure everything was riding, everything was riding smooth and level. Oiled it up, gassed it up. <clears throat> but I want to point out some major differences that we have found just by putting it together between this and the Harbor Freight sawmill. So the first major difference is that this has four big square tubes 
holding it together here. And the Harbor Freight only had one square one here and a round one over on the other side. It didn't have this part. So this definitely feels sturdier. Um, it doesn't wobble and shake as much as the Harbor Freight one did. Um, another difference is the um, ruler here for making your cuts. They give you two rulers. This one is one inch and two inch and it allows for blade kerf. So if you want a one inch board, you are actually going to get a one inch board. Then the other ruler is on this side. They're magnetic, so you can just take them off and use whichever one you want. This is a one inch side and this is a quarter side, so it's four, four fours. And this one doesn't allow for blade kerf, but it does add an eighth of an inch to it. So to allow for planing after it dries. Another major difference is the fluid tank. This is aluminum. The one from Harbor Freight was plastic and the top didn't like to stay on because it didn't screw on or anything. This top fits down in there and it has a chain so you won't lose it. I like this tank. Um, so let's see. Um, another huge difference which we love we haven't actually tried this saw out yet is the auto lube system <clears throat> so when you push on the throttle it's supposed to start the fluid the lubrication which is water and dish soap but it automatically starts that and then when you let go of the handle it stops it so you don't have to remember to go up there and shut off the lubrication like we did with the other one love that feature this also has an hour meter. See, we have not used it yet. Um, so that way you know when you need to do maintenance on it. <clears throat> this has a nine and a half horsepower motor. We, we had to purchase, we had to pay extra for that option. It also comes with a seven horse, but we paid extra for the nine and a half horse, which says it's 277 cc's. And the one from Harbor Freight said it was 301 cc. So going by that, this, this motor is not as strong as the one from Harbor Freight. But it does seem to be um, a lot more sturdy, a lot, a lot better built. Um, we didn't have any problem on the joints where the two bed pieces come together on the Harbor Freight when you rolled over the middle right there where they come together you would feel a big pump this one seems to ride quite smoothly over the joints for right now anyway uh let's see what else do we know of that is different the crank handle the part that we had with the harbor freight mill where it broke and we couldn't crank it up and down this is just kind of like a boat crank i guess it has the cable here and you, so you just crank it and it winds up the cable and I really like that feature because if it was to break you just take this off and you can put on a new one so I definitely think that handle is a better idea we also don't have to lock it in when we raise it up to the height that we want let's see if I can raise it up without it moving on me once we raise it up, there is this on the handle. You can click that in and it locks it right here. So we don't have to reach down here and lock in each side like we did with the Harbor Freight. So that's another step that they've eliminated that you don't have to worry about anymore. Um, the Blade tensioning seems to be super, super easy. We obviously haven't had to change a blade yet. It came with the blade installed. But this right here inside, when you loosen, here I'll show you. When you loosen the, the blade, this part, this inner part comes out. 
So you can see it here. And then to tension, correctly tension the blade, you just turn it until it is flush. Can't really do this one handed. But you just turn that. There we go. Now you can see that that inner part is now flush with the outer part. So that's when you know it's correctly tensioned. That makes it super easy. You don't have to feel the blade and figure out how much deflection and whatever and mess with it. So super cool. Um, I think that's about it. I think that's about all the things I can think of right now that we really like. Oh, it definitely, it came with the leveling legs. So there's 12 leveling legs on it. So you can unscrew the bolt up here, the nut up here, and it raises and lowers it. So you can level it out pretty easy. Oh, another major feature. Sorry, I forgot this one. On the wheels, let me show you on this one. These wheels, they have this piece of cable and it's just running on the wheel. So it cleans the wheels off as you're, as you're rolling. It cleans it top and bottom, which on the Harbor Freight Mill, we had to get a screwdriver that would fit and just scrape them like constantly because when the water is mixing with the wood shavings, the wood shavings are wet and they get real sticky. So we had to scrape those wheels constantly. So I love that feature. I hope it works as good as I'm hoping it does. Um, sorry, it's so hot out here. It's like 87 degrees today, super muggy. Um, I think that's all the, all the features to this one, all the ones I could think of anyway that are a lot different from the Harbor Freight sawmill. So we are going to grab a log from the tree that we had the neighbor cut down. We'll grab a 10 foot. That's another huge benefit to this one is you can cut a 10 foot log and on the Harbor Freight Mill, you can only cut a nine foot. So we're gonna grab a 10 footer and we'll throw it up here and we'll show you how it cuts. Cause we don't know, we haven't tried it yet. All right, guys, we got the, we have the log all loaded up. I'm looking forward to this. We're gonna let Eddie go ahead and make it into a cant.
it's all squared up all four sides that is some pretty wood i like that wood i think that'll make some really good siding on ocean's bedroom okay so eddie tell us what do you feel is the comparison between this one and the harbor freight mill that we had well it's it's a lot quieter than the harbor freight one it's a lot more sturdy and it seems to be able to, to handle the the load a lot better. I was going a lot faster on this one than I I was with that Harbor Freight. Just got more power and it just feels like a better saw. So you mean you like this one better? Oh, absolutely. I think, of course, it might be a little early to tell, but right now I'm liking it a lot better. Well, you know what I noticed? I noticed that he didn't forget to shut the water off. Which he did a lot with the Harbor Freight oh, sawmill. <laughs> thanks. I, since you mentioned that, so, I forgot to shut the water off. Good the, thing it shuts off on its own. So the automatic watering system that shuts off when you let go of the handle, that is great. Because, like I said, we don't forget to shut it off. Now I can't wait to get my hands on it and start also, slabbing this. Also, I noticed something else with those automatic cleaning systems. You don't have that bump, bump, bump as you go down the rail. I like that. I don't have to get down there with a screwdriver and clean it out. I'm liking it so far. All right, guys. So we're not going to bore you with us slabbing up this, this log. You've seen us do it once before. I'm sure we'll have another video where we do slab up a log and show you the wood and all that. But I'm sure this video has been long enough. So we're going to slab it up off camera. And we will see you guys next week. Now, please hit that like button if you like the video, and if you haven't already, you can hit the subscribe button down below. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time.